scientists believe they have uncovered the answers to the perplexing ancient mystery of one of the most unusual archaeological sites on the planet. A mystery that remained shrouded in secrecy for centuries because it was thought to be left by a culture that should never have existed in the first place. But what scientists have discovered has shocked the world because here is where they mastered something thought to be so impossible that it was in such high demand it became known throughout the world. In regions where water is the most scarce, temperatures are the most extreme and resources the most limited. Complex, advanced and sophisticated societies blossomed that left behind monumental legacies that continue to astound us today. The fact that so many distinct cultures, separated by vast distances and time, independently chose to settle and flourish in such harsh conditions is truly remarkable. It is a paradox that has captivated historians and archaeologists for centuries. Why, we ask ourselves, would so many diverse cultures choose to establish themselves in such challenging environments? What drove them to conquer these inhospitable terrains and build their communities against all odds? The evidence they left behind tells a compelling story that speaks of advanced knowledge and long-lost technologies. Scattered across the deserts are the vestiges of highly sophisticated systems and infrastructure which sustained surprisingly large settlements. What is truly astonishing is how they achieved all of this because, to this day, very little is known about what resources they had or what tools they used. But among these arid cradles of civilization, one region stands out with particular distinction, Persia. Here, in the vast expanse of the Iranian plateau, a succession of powerful empires rose and fell that left behind a legacy of innovation and cultural achievement that continues to resonate today. The Persians were masters of the desert. They transformed the harsh landscape into fertile ground that supported the intellectual and technological advancement of surprisingly large populations. And their ingenuity gave rise to a series of remarkable inventions and systems that would shape the course of human history. The Persians established the first postal service, taxation, and the first banking system. Faced with the challenges of agricultural economies vulnerable to the whims of weather and harvest, the Persians developed sophisticated financial systems to protect farmers and facilitate trade. Their postal service established a vast network of postal routes that enabled rapid communication across their vast empire. The modern brick also comes from Persia, as well as the first refrigerator, and even ice cream, which are both particularly remarkable for their desert location. They even devised ingenious methods of harnessing the power of the wind, constructing windmills to grind grain and pump water, and the first technology to air-conditioned buildings. But of all their achievements, there remained one very remarkable Persian mystery that had perplexed archaeologists and historians until very recently. This peculiar site is situated on a rocky mountainside above an ancient city which thrived during the 9th and 10th century. It was a highly significant location that sustained a large population and abundant agriculture, despite being located in an arid region known for scorching heat, erratic rainfall, and sparse vegetation. The city is known as Siraf, and during its heyday, it was one of the busiest and most important Persian ports of its time, with merchants trading with India, Southeast Asia, the Red Sea, East Africa, Madagascar, the Malay Peninsula, and China. Siraf's prominence as a port was due to its summertime winds that coincided with a fall in sea level, but it was a masterful and ingenious enterprise from these thousands of holes on this barren mountainside that made it invaluable to passing ships on such an important trade route. And combined with its natural factors established Saraf as a significant maritime hub in the Persian Gulf, facilitating trade and settlement development throughout the known world. Siraf's downfall eventually came to pass because of a devastating earthquake in 977 
leaving the city heavily damaged. Thereafter, most of the trade was diverted to alternative ports where the people of Siraf migrated to, leaving behind them one of history's greatest mysteries, a remarkable, unique and vast desert landscape of endless rectangular and circular holes carved into sheer rock unseen anywhere else on the planet, whose purpose was lost when the city was abandoned after the earthquake. This tragic event led scientists to mistakenly believe that these thousands upon thousands of rectangular shapes on the slopes above the city to be graves. However, this theory did not hold up. The ancient city of Siraf and its urban center are located on a narrow stretch of coastline by the sea. It would not physically make sense to transport bodies miles up a mountain to bury them. Furthermore, archaeologists did some deeper digging and did not discover any remains or bones inside the rectangles or on the slopes. However, what they did discover was something far more fascinating that could answer all of the unanswered anomalies. It comes back to Siraf's popularity as a trading port and why ships wanted to stop there in the first place. And that was because Siraf had something they couldn't live without. Water. Siraf was known as a reliable port to stock up on drinking water and this relentlessly hot and dry part of the world that's dominated by desert landscapes and extreme heat, water was an extremely valuable commodity to trade in. Historical accounts stated that the port of Siraf was a vital water supply hub for visiting ships, which were able to fill up on an abundance of drinking water. How could this have been at all possible in a place as arid and as inhospitable as this, where there are no springs and only erratic rainfall? Remarkably, this city was also able to fulfill the water needs of its residents and agriculture as well. Even the name of this city, Siraf, comes from the word Sirab, symbolizing the abundance of water. Given these challenging environmental conditions, the most fascinating aspect of this historic port city is how residents secured a constant water supply. Despite there being no rich underground aquifers, yet the ingenuity of the ancients knew how to master water, making it almost abundant where it's naturally scarce. So if they weren't graves, what were the more than 7,400 rectangular shapes for? What archaeologists and experts discovered was far more complex than they could have ever imagined. And the answer lay in Siraf's unique geography and climate. Siraf extends along a narrow coastal area bordered by the foothills of these mountains, which run parallel to the coastline. Here there are erratic rains during winter and autumn, resulting in flash floods during these months. There are dry rivers, known locally as wadis, which channel these flash floods from the highlands, but at the same time, flooding the port town. This paradox of not having enough water to having too much all at once is not unique to this port town. It's been happening all over the world to this day, but what makes Siraf stand out is how they managed to use this to their advantage by solving their flooding problems and at the same time creating abundant fresh water. And they did this by manipulating the landscape to catch as much water as possible when it rained and during the flash floods. And the first step of achieving this was in the holes. The holes were used to recharge pools of water underground by harvesting rain and flash flood water and stopping it from sweeping down the mountain, causing erosion and flooding. But the holes were also discovered to be used for agriculture. Most noticeably, olive trees still exist on these slopes today. You can see the rectangles are clearly greener than the bare face of the mountain. Grape vines would have also been used for covering the recharge pools, slowing evaporation and also maximizing the area for cultivation. Some of the wells were used for planting date palms. Even though stair access was built, it would have been very labor intensive to have to constantly move water and goods up and down. This is where they used another ingenious water technology, locally known as the Kanat. These are underground water channels that would take harvested water from the mountain down to the city and the agricultural fields below. They used sequences of holes to collect the rain and flood water that was then directed through man-made channels to wells and underground water reservoirs. These reservoirs are believed to have been built 
at the end of their natural watershed, which helped them to store water for a considerable period of time. Water would also collect that had seeped down naturally through the stone and rock. The circular-shaped holes you can see were the wells, which range from depths of 20 meters to an incredible 140 meters underground. The benefit of keeping water underground means it can be stored for much longer without it evaporating away. It also keeps the water clean and suitable for drinking. This clever water harvesting technique was combined with agricultural systems to irrigate fruits and vegetables. To further manage flash floods, they dammed the gully at three points, with a conduit leading from the highest barrier towards an aqueduct which entered Siraf through the gorge. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like down below and consider subscribing for more content like this. Also, you might want to head over to our website to check out our selection of free ebooks. Thanks for watching another video by Leaf of Life.